I'll keep the introduction short. Top five gadgets for overlanding. I've got links in the description. Let's go. My first suggestion is the cheapest of all of my suggestions, and this is a must have for if you're camping somewhere like Kentucky. Stupid hot and humid here in the summers, and this really, I mean, I couldn't sleep without something like this. Uh, now, there are several options available for how they're powered. You can get 12 volt ones that plug into a cigarette lighter in your vehicle. You can also get ones with a battery built in, but I suggest getting a USB one. This means that you can, well, it's the most versatile. You can plug this into your vehicle with a cigarette lighter adapter, or you can do it the way I do it and plug into a battery pack. Now these battery packs are gonna last a lot longer than any, uh, any of these fans with the built-in battery. Uh, plus, you can switch out these battery packs really easily if it runs out in the night. Uh, now this battery pack, I uh, actually kind of recommend this one. It was the cheapest or one of the cheapest available. Uh, it is 25,000 milliamp hours and it will run that fan for probably about a week with no issues. I got this one because it's got several USB outlets on it and uh, I can run it and charge my phone at the same time. It does come with a solar panel on it. However, don't buy this for the solar panel. If you can find another one cheaper, go with the cheaper one. The solar panel on this is, I'd say almost useless. If you want something with a little more power than this, take a look at my second suggestion. This is the Jackery 240 battery pack. Uh, now this thing can be charged multiple ways. You can plug it into a wall, so a 110 volt outlet. Uh, you can plug it into a cigarette lighter in your vehicle, or you can plug it into a solar panel. And Jackery sells several solar panels that go with this too. Now, usually when you buy something like this, you'll see claims from the manufacturer and it'll say like up to 20 phone charges and usually you don't get what they claim. However, I've been really impressed with this since buying it. I am still in the middle of testing it, but it has exceeded a lot of the claims that Jackery have. Uh, one of the things is phone charging. I mean, you're looking, they say 17 plus, and it is easily 17 plus. Um, drone battery charges, they say four plus, and I found that I've managed to do uh, more than that. I'm going five, six drone battery charges. Uh, it's also fantastic for a CPAP machine. Uh, I lent this to a friend who uh, ran it overnight and went from 100%, uh, and it's actually, haven't charged it since, 100% down to 81% overnight using their CPAP machine. Uh, I also use this for my fridge. So I have it plugged into uh, one of the two cigarette lighters that I put in the back of my Forerunner. Uh, I'm on one with the relay, so it charges when the vehicle's on and then runs off this, or the, the fridge runs off this when the vehicle's off. And in one of the tests I did, it ran the fridge for 17 hours, which is really, really impressive and way more than I ever thought it would do. And that's a nice transition to my next gadget. What a pro. A fridge. Having a fridge while overlanding is a game changer. Uh, now, I know you can go out with a cooler. I've traveled plenty with a cooler, but if you're out for more than maybe like three, four days at a time, having a fridge is fantastic. You don't have to worry about refilling it with ice all the time or digging through a bunch of ice trying to find your soggy food. It all just keeps it cold and it keeps it cold permanently. Uh, it's also fantastic for drinks. If you're out somewhere hot and dry, you're constantly rotating drinks in. And if you did that in a cooler full of ice, you're just gonna melt all that ice instantly. But in this, it'll warm, it warm it up, it'll cool it down for you. There are a bunch of brands available for fridges. I personally went with the Costway one. It's one of the cheaper ones available on the market. I did a review on it, so you can take a look at some of the features and uh, what compressor it has if you watch that review, and I'll put a link up somewhere up there. I don't remember which side it is, uh, but you could choose from a bunch of different brands. Something like Dometic, they've been producing fridges, 12 volt fridges for decades. So if you want the best of the best, check out that. ARB, uh, Snowmaster, I mean, there are some really good, but really expensive fridges out there. If you're new, like just getting into overlanding, don't rush out and buy something like this. Go out with a cooler first, something you already have, see how you like it. You may save yourself a few hundred dollars. That transitions me to the next thing, which if you're new to overlanding, you should go out and get right now. Paper maps and atlases are still cool and still something I use all the time. Uh, I do a lot of route planning using this paper atlas I've got in front of me, it's the Benchmark series. Uh, and I always take these with me when I'm going somewhere for an extended period of time. I've got one for Utah, Colorado, Arizona, um, picking up one for New Mexico. You know, I firmly believe in taking 
pay for atlases, pay for maps with me. But these days, you can take devices with GPS built in and it makes life a lot easier when you're navigating on the trail. For me, the app of choice is Gaia GPS with the premium subscription. It is well worth getting. About the price of an oil change covers you for a whole year. They give you multiple map layers, which is great for planning. Uh, and you can plan on a computer and it will uh, automatically sync to other devices like an iPhone or an iPad. And then when you're out on the trails, you've got that path in front of you. It shows you where you are. It's just so much easier than using paper maps. You don't have to stop and look at the map. You can just glance down and see where you go next. It's also great for tracking. So I can just click or just press a button and it'll track where I'm going. I can drop waypoints along along the way uh, and also whatever you track is really easy to share and you can have people share stuff with you really easily whether it's airdropped or text message or email or whatever I actually have all of my tracks and my waypoints uploaded to my patreon so people who are subscribed on there they can just one click download to their phone or if they're on a the computer they can download it and then upload it to their Gaia GPS account it is well worth getting and I actually have a coupon uh, available I put a link to it for uh, this in the description, uh, it gives you up to 52% off a subscription. If you're just getting into overlanding, you can use a device you already have. So whether it's uh, an Android or an Apple device, the guy works on them both. For me, I started off using this and then I switched over to an iPad mini. I do recommend if you're going to get a tablet, get Apple. It works slightly better than Android does for Gaia. Uh, but if you're going an iPad, you'll need one that has cellular enabled. That way it comes with a GPS chip built in. You don't need to use cellular, like I don't even have a SIM card in here. Um, I use it offline, but you just need it for the GPS chip unless you have what's coming up next. I'm getting good at these transitions. This is a satellite tracking and messaging device. There are a couple of brands available. This one's the Spot, uh, or you can get the Garmin version. Now, the Spot is a little bit cheaper, both the actual device itself and the plan. Uh, for this one, you're looking at $25 a year, plus $12 a month that you're gonna use it for the base subscription. You can suspend the service, so I only have this active when I'm going out. I'll activate it for a month for $12, and then I'll turn it off when I'm at home. Uh, it also has a physical keypad on it or keyboard on it where the Garmin does not. The Garmin, you can text from the device, uh, but it's a very long and drawn out process, or you can sync it up to your phone and type up text messages using your phone. Now I have read reports that the Garmin is a little more reliable. It's got slightly better service. Uh, I've not had any issues with this in terms of messages getting it out or uh, coming in, or and it hasn't dropped any tracking points. Uh, but I have had a few problems with messages being sent to me if they're over 240 characters. Uh, it doesn't like long messages, it'll break it up into multiple short messages, uh, and sometimes the order is scrambled, so you kind of have to puzzle it together. Hopefully they update that. Uh, I have had an update notification and haven't updated this yet, so that could be coming. They both have the same basic functions though. With both of them, you can send and receive messages. Uh, you can also push an SOS button on both of them to call for emergency aid. Uh, and you can also track yourself with these and the tracking points are uploaded to a website. That way uh, you can tell someone where you're going to be, when you're going to be back and they can follow along. The biggest advantage that the Garmin has over this one though, is that you can sync your Garmin GPS up to the iPad. So even if your iPad doesn't have GPS, you can use the Garmin device to tell it where it's at. That way you don't need to buy an iPad that has built in GPS. These are fantastic for emergency situations, especially if you're gonna go out somewhere alone. I have been a lot more comfortable traveling alone since I bought this. Um, I will tell someone where I'm going, I'll give them the tracking link, that way they can follow along uh, and they can see uh, where I am if I get held up somewhere or if I'm not back when I'm supposed to be, they can see exactly where I'm at. I can also send out messages so I can ask for help, ask for advice, that kind of thing, no matter where I am. I don't have to have cell phone service. I've used this a couple of times. One time I was in Maine in the North Maine woods and there's just absolutely no cell service uh, and I'd failed to plan gas stations. So I was able to send a message out to someone asking where the nearest gas station was. And uh, also when I was in Utah this summer, I had gone out uh, and I told the, per told the person that I was with that I'd be back around nine, 10 o'clock. And then I decided I was gonna camp out there
there instead of coming back. So I was able to send them a message saying, I'm not gonna be back tonight. I do also recommend a radio for communication so you don't have to text every time you want an update. Um, there are a bunch of options with radio and I have done a video on it before and I'll put a link to it somewhere up there as well. Um, but basically to sum it up, I think ham radio is the way to go. It gives you the most options. It has uh, the most range with, especially with access to thousands of repeaters across the United States. Uh, and it can also do GPS tracking if you have one that has GPS built into it. So it's another good emergency backup and, or if you just want it to be basic communication, it can be basic communication. You do have to take a test, but it is actually pretty easy. It looks really difficult when you first look at it, but I mean, it took me a few days of studying to pass uh, and it's $15, good for 10 years. Now I know I said top five gadgets, but I've got to throw an extra one in there anyway, and that is photography stuff. Are you really an overlander if you don't have an Instagram account or a YouTube channel? I have three cameras that I take with me for photography and for video. Uh, the first one's my main camera, which I'm recording on now. It is a Sony a6300. I think it's a fantastic camera. It's got a bunch of features. Uh, you're looking at 4K, 30 FPS. You can also do up to 120 FPS of slow motion in 1080p, high definition. Uh, and it still has the, uh, it still records sound when it is in slow motion. Another thing you wanna look for in a main camera is gonna be uh, something that has a microphone input. Uh, a lot of cameras don't have that. A lot of cheaper ones don't have that. So make sure you get something with a microphone input. I really love the colors from the Sony camera as well. Uh, and you have options for other picture profiles too. So you can do some of the flatter colors that uh, make it easier for editing and color grading afterwards. If you don't need something with all the fancy bells and whistles, you just want something to record and that has an external mic, I think the Canon M50 is a solid choice. It's not one that I own personally, but it's one that I'd recommend to someone who's looking to get into doing some semi-serious videography. For a second camera, I really recommend getting something like the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Uh, it has surprisingly good picture quality. I use this uh, when I'm in the vehicle. I have it up in the windshield looking at me. I also have it, uh, I have another mount for it so it looks out the front. Picture quality is actually really good on this. Uh, you're looking at, um, you can get 4K 60 FPS too. You can do slow motion, but the quality, you kind of lose some quality there. Um, and of course, it's an action camera, so I could mount it outside and I can get it wet. I can use this in the rain with no problems. I can completely submerge it if I want to. There are older versions of this that are obviously a lot cheaper. However, I would not go any older than the Hero 7 Black just because this is where they introduced their amazing stabilization. The video on this is incredibly stable. You can hand hold it and wiggle it around and you wouldn't really ever notice. You could go with the newer ones. They've just released the Hero 8 Black. Uh, it is probably, you know, looking 50 to $100 more than the Hero 7. And the only real benefit you get is even more stabilization. But I was so impressed with this. I, don't, I, I certainly wouldn't upgrade to the Hero 8. I'd stick with the Hero 7, save some money. The last piece of camera equipment I have is this drone. It's the Mavic 2 Pro. And this has been the latest thing that I've added to the collection of cameras. And I absolutely love it. Uh, having a drone adds a whole new dimension to the video. Uh, and you can see things that you just can't see from the ground. It also means that I can get a lot more or a lot easier uh, driving shots. Uh, if I've got my wife driving, I can sit in the passenger seat and I can fly on ahead or I can fly while we're driving. Uh, where before I'd either have to run on ahead uh, or stay back video and then run to catch up. So it's made life a lot easier. Uh, and this, I honestly think it's one of the best consumer drones out there. It is a huge upgrade from the Mavic Pro, the original Mavic. Uh, and this one with the, new, uh, with the new camera is actually better than the Phantom 4 Pro. Uh, it takes some fantastic video. That being said, if you're gonna use something like this, you do need to be careful about the airspace you're flying in. There are a lot of restrictions uh, and we need to stick to those. Otherwise the rules are gonna get even stricter. Um, so a place like national parks, state parks, uh, national recreation areas you just can't fly in so make sure you check those beforehand and I do think it's a good idea to get licensed um, through the FAA as well if you have a YouTube channel and you're using it for that technically you should be licensed anyway because well I'm assuming eventually you're going to be monetized if that is your goal then you do need to have the license uh, and if you have something like affiliate links underneath even if your video itself is not monetized that still counts um, 
Now I know the test is pretty intimidating. It's $160. And honestly, I think that's what makes it so scary is the thought of losing $160. Uh, while the test questions are hard, I think st statistically speaking, uh, it's not a difficult test. Uh, it's all multiple choice, there's three options for everything. So even if you were to totally guess, you know, shut your eyes and just randomly click through, you're gonna get a third of them right, statistically. And if you make educated guesses, you're looking more like 50%. So I think if you just watch one or two videos, there are some excellent videos out there, uh, watch those, you're probably gonna pass. There's some practice tests you can take as well. You can probably pass, you can do it. If you found this video useful, definitely give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And I'd love to hear from you as well. What have I missed? You know, I only went over, I was gonna say five things, but really it was more like 15 things. But I did miss stuff off. You know, things like an air compressor. I think it's one of those things that you just cannot go without. So let me know what I've missed in the comments uh, and check out some of my other videos.